So I'm super excited for this episode today. We had Todd Chance on from DaddyDaughterTime.org. This is a local organization in Grand Rapids that uh, for $99 a year, the dad and your daughter or a stepdad and the daughter or uh, a male in you know the child's life, anyone that's a male and a daughter can go to this Um it's it's amazing. Uh, as you will hear in the podcast, I am not currently a member because I screwed up on something and never re-upped. But please check it out. Uh, if you have any questions about Daddy Daughter Time, um, Todd gave out his fel- telephone number and he will answer any questions. He he prefers to talk to people on the phone uh, instead of uh, going to the website. I mean, you can go there too, but uh, it's 616-591-3867, 616-591-3867. So in this podcast, we'll you know kind of talk about the organization and Todd himself. And so, yeah, it was a really, really fun episode. So if you are a dad and you have a daughter and you live in the Grand Rapids area or West Michigan area, you need to do this. Enjoy. Hi guys, welcome to Threads Podcast, Life Unfiltered. Thank you so much for joining us tonight as I get situated here and find my audio so I don't know if I'm screaming too loud. There we go. So Ben is not here tonight, unfortunately. He had something come up, so uh, we had this scheduled out for months. And so I want to uh, welcome you to the podcast. This is Todd Chance. Uh, from Daddy Daughter Time Organization. Correct? Thanks, Jason. Yeah, thank you. All right. Um, so Threads is kind of uh, Ben always does this intro, so this might be a little weird for do, me. Do your best, Ben. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, basically, Threads is uh, some vulnerability about mental health, um, our parenting. Um, we both come from uh, Ben's uh, a foster dad, and mm-hmm. I came from a pretty dysfunctional family and I have an autistic son. So all that to be said, that's kind of what we talk about. And we also interview people that, um, you know, that are interesting to us. And so, uh, that's why I reached out to you. (laughs) I'm glad I made the list. Thanks. Yeah. You know, I gotta be honest. Uh, I wish Ben could have made it because that foster parenting thing is in my background too. Oh, is it? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, my parents, my biological parents were foster parents. Okay. Of all, we had like 12 at one point when I was like four or five years old. Oh, wow. And I was always the youngest, no matter what, even still now, because we, one of those kids we adopted. So I have an adopted brother. I have a half sister. I have twin sisters. I have every kind of sibling pretty much covered. Okay. Even step siblings now. Okay. Because my mom, uh, dad passed and she remarried. So okay. I pretty much got them all covered. But yeah, we had uh, foster kids were part of my growing up. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, so I wondered how long we'll go on this podcast before you say, why have you renewed your membership? <laughs> I'll just call it out now. So um, I felt bad about that. You know, it's one of those things. I know you had, it was a tech thing, right? Like your yeah, processor yeah. didn't auto renew yeah, and the then other. canceled everybody. And you right. were probably like, I was like, oh, no. Yeah. yeah, we have it set up so if someone buys a membership to Daddy Daughter Time, that it should automatically renew. Yeah, like everything else. Like everything does, unless you cancel it, which is you know a smart way to, to help people retain. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it, it flipped out on us, and uh, a whole six, seven months of it wasn't working. So Wow. So we lost them. I didn't want to harass people, so I didn't. Oh, well, good for you. I, uh, to tell you the truth, I wasn't going to ask you. You I, really, weren't? I really wasn't going to oh, ask you. you I, <laughs> I don't know. You, you can tell the truth. I don't know if you've listened to any of our episodes, but we call it like it is. Like, yeah, I, I'm not. Yeah. I call Ben out right. Like, <laughs> this is crap. Like, yeah. you're not doing what you said you were doing. You or, will uh, You will hear nothing but blunt honesty out of me. That's pretty okay. much how I rolled, too. But no, I hadn't even crossed my mind of, on your own podcast to call you out on my I, organization. <laughs> I would I I was gonna I, I just I was gonna be like should I wait or just do it myself? I'm I, glad you did. I thought it would have been hilarious if you did. Oh so. no no I would never. So okay, why don't we just go into just who you are? Um, okay. What kind of podcast do you listen to? By the way, if you listen, if you have time, I, I do. Uh, I do listen to right now. Believe it or not, this is going to sound really strange because it's not your typical podcast. But I'm listening to Duolingo podcasts. I don't even know what that is. All right, so there's this app called Duolingo that goes on your phone or on your computer that basically can teach you one of, I don't know, 
80 different languages. Oh. And I was a Spanish minor in college and have retained enough to talk to maybe a three-year-old poorly. <laughs> so I was like, uh, I, I, I really enjoyed that. And really? I took to it. And I have a really good accent. People who speak Spanish say that I ha- have an authentic, I have a really good accent. So maybe I thought, okay, I'll do this every day. And I got hooked on it. Okay. But they do this great, their podcast is done ingeniously because it's, it's done in intermediate Spanish. And there's a narrator who speaks English and comes in and kind of gives you context throughout the story. Okay. So you'll hear somebody speaking, and I'll pick every fifth word, and sometimes I'll get really pumped because I got like 80% of it and understood what they were saying. Yeah. But then when she comes in to continue the story along, she does little callbacks to what was just spoken in Spanish. Very well done. Not very yeah. obviously, but in, she really provides good context to help you understand where the story is going. And I probably pick up about half that, but... That's the podcast I've been listening to. Audiobooks are a big part of my life just okay. because I have long drives to pick up my daughter. Um, I'm a divorced, and so I have uh, part custody, part time yeah. custody. So, and it's a long drive because she lives in uh, near the Indianapolis area. Oh, wow. Yeah. So I'm doing, you know, four hour round trips. And so audiobooks have become a big deal, but we are both now deep into Harry Potter. I think oh. number uh, two, almost at the end of two, going on to okay. three. So she's nine. So she's right in the wheelhouse of the Harry Potter world. Yeah. yeah. I never read any of them, but all the kids have read them and watched the movies. Right. And so yeah. they're super excited about that. Um, where did you grow up? Did you grow up in Grand Rapids? No, or? I'm a transplant, okay. but uh, but I've, I drank the Kool-Aid. And, <laughs> and trust me, it wasn't Kool-Aid that I thought I was going to like. Right. Because I grew up... Huh, I'll give you the short version. Central Illinois. I grew up actually west of Chicago. I was born Rockford, Illinois, and okay. just west of Chicago, about an hour west, and didn't even know there was a Rockford, Michigan. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then my parents uh, moved down to Central Illinois, really in the middle of nowhere, okay. and they did that for church. They did that because they wanted to become foster parents, okay. so they got involved heavenly, uh, heavenly. <laughs> That's a little. That was weird. That was perfect. I met heavily, heavily, but I said heavenly. I mean, like I, I don't know. Talked about was, church. It is Sunday, <laughs> so yeah. So they got involved in that, and that's when, uh, for a few years, they were doing that, considered being missionaries. I heard a lot of stories about us moving to Spain or to Montana mm. or where we were going to go, but they ended up ditching that. And uh, Dad became a an aluminum worker. He was a truck driver for a while, and then an aluminum worker. And Mom worked at medical records in a hospital. Okay, you know, blue collar stuff, and uh, lived literally. I'm talking, uh, my graduating class in high school was, I think, 29. Whoa. And we were the big class. Wow. Because I think there was just about 100 kids in the whole school. Holy cow. So was it, was it like K through 12 in one build? Not one building, almost but pretty close. Literally across the street, which wasn't a street. Right. It was like to the parking lot. So you would walk away walk from one building to the other when you when you got from elementary, middle to high school. The bus would just go right down the middle of the parking and lot. And just shoot them out of each yeah. side. Yeah. Yeah. It was literally, it was, it was that small. So, um... When I graduated there, I didn't really fit in small town. I didn't when you when you when you don't grow up in a small town, when you're not a local, um, you you'll never fit in. No. You're a transplant to a to a basically to a clique. Yeah, everyone knows each other. Right. And so high school wasn't pleasant for me. Mm. School wasn't great. So I immediately went to Cal State. I went to Pacific Christian College in Cal State Fullerton. Okay. So I I took a flight to California to get as far away as from the sticks as I could. Wow. And uh, enjoyed that for Gosh, had a great semester, made the dean's list. Next semester, dumped out. Did you? <laughs> My parents were so proud. Really? Oh no, they were they were furious. I'm well, sure. I mean, why did you just? I didn't. Uh, I thought I was. I was like, I I thought maybe I would try this acting thing. Oh really? Right. I had that dream. Small midwestern town boy gonna you know yeah <laughs> gonna go. And I found out very quickly that I can't act worth crap. Okay, but I, I'm not good at it. Right at all. <laughs> so. Uh, did other things. Worked at Disneyland for a summer. Oh, that's I, I, was that cool. That was a cool job. Oh, yeah, that's a good experience. Twenty thousand leagues under the sea to date myself. This is we're talking a long time ago. <laughs> like that had been re- that was, at that time was the oldest ride in the park, and then it got replaced by Nemo, and I think Nemo's gone. So, oh, well, that really ages you. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. So, uh, so you know that was only the two three years of my life out in California, and I decided uh, to come back. And get to work, and then ended up going back to school, getting my degree, and and then figuring out what I was going to do. Did a, <laughs> I, a interesting story. I tell you, I worked for a place called Redneck Trailer Supplies. It, that that's where I lived in Central Illinois. They, really? had a, they had a they had a place called Redneck Trailer Supply, and there's a reason why. Yeah, okay. I mean, you, you ever hear of a of a gooseneck trailer? Yeah, sits in the fifth wheel. Yeah, you know that has that neck. Well, evidently there was some place in Alabama that our main competitor had started. And he, no matter what color the trailer was, 
he painted the gooseneck yellow. So it was yellow neck trailer. Oh. And so the owner of our company thought he was going to sell parts too yeah. and do the same thing and paint them. He must have known what he was doing. Yeah, because of redneck. I, I mean, mean. Uh, seriously, <laughs> but it be, but it sounds small. It was like the it was like the Walmart of trailer supply companies. So okay. It was like it, we sold coast to coast, and it was big big ticket items and from axles to to trailer lights to whatever. and that was just for like fifth wheels and stuff. Oh, it was for, for anything. anything. Horse trailers, okay. little piddly trailers that you're just hauling stuff around your yard all the okay. way up to all the way up to air brake semi. Wow. So, you know, uh, I had a choice there to uh, manage one of their branches in Sykeston, Missouri, or go back to school. Mm. I went back to school. Good choice. <laughs> I didn't want to live in Sykeston, Missouri. And so, yeah, graduated college. And um, did, what did you study? Broadcasting? Yeah, MassCom. MassCom with a Spanish minor. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Cool. And I didn't know what I wanted to be. I didn't know what I wanted to be for a long time. Now I do. It just took a long time to figure out what I wanted to do. Some okay. people, I, I envy people who know that at a young age. I don't understand how they do it. Yeah. But they do it. And I wish, because you're, you're going to save a lot of time. Yeah. But I mean, at least you got the degree that you're working in now. Yeah. I mean, there's a lot of people that get their four year degree in history and they're like, I was, I was, I had a, uh, passenger last night and she was a dentist and her son went and got a history degree and, she, and we both kind of looked at each other and she's like yeah history yeah what restaurant is he working at right right, right. <laughs> i don't know where he is actually work what did she say somewhere in corporate um oh dish network he, she he, i know out of all that he's mm-hmm. like mm-hmm. looks over contracts he's like works i don't know something nothing to do it. with history right? no but no, i mean at right. least he's got a, a, a decent job yeah, that's good but um, how long have you been in the media business? Um, yeah, that's where I, when I graduated college, a, a buddy of mine, the only friend I really made in college, I happened to be at the time working as a supplemental worker at UAW building Mitsubishi cars <laughs> on Fridays and Mondays and, oh. then, and then tend and bar during the week. Okay. This was where, where, where my degree took me. Wow. <laughs> right. But I heard him on the air at the local top 40 station. And I said, I know that guy. That's my that's my buddy. Yeah. So I call him up. I know the this is the station that I called up as a kid. This was the top forty station. So. Oh, this was in Illinois. Yeah, Central okay. Illinois. I'll, I'll even give it a shout out if I can. No, I, mean, I don't care. That's one hundred one point five WBNQ. Ooh, that, look that, at that, you. That's <laughs> that was the station. And so you know, I call up Jay, and I'm like, Hey, what are you doing? He goes, Quick, I just started this show. I got crickets on the phone lines. Nobody's calling. It's an all request show. Request oh, a song for me. I'm like, okay, whatever you want. Yeah. I'll tape you. We'll play it back because it'll be a request. All I'm right. Like, okay. Kaja Goo Goo Too Shy. And I had never heard of that nope, in my neither. life. But if I, if, I, if I gave it to you now, you'd probably know Too Shy Shy. Hush Hush. Ad, ah. I'm not going to sing the song, but it's, a, it's an 80s song. Okay. Right? And so, um, yeah. So I, uh, I request it. And then he calls me back the same next day. And he's like, you, we went to school together. What are you doing? And I told him what I was doing for a living. And he said, you should come here. Yeah. Come do this. I mean, Did he have a degree he, in that? Or yeah, he was, was, he was like the program director of the college station. Oh, okay. Jay, Jay Pat is one of the smart. As a matter of fact, he just left radio after almost 20 years okay. of being brilliant at it to start his own company to help small businesses. Oh. I mean, he's just one of those guys who's just like, you know, you look at him and you think, you know stuff. Yeah. You just do. You know and, and you inspire people and you know how to, I mean, he's the type of guy who would, I always used to say I sucked at being a friend, and I wouldn't know how to be one if I hadn't had him as a friend. Because oh. he was so good at being a friend. That's a pretty big compliment. Well, yeah, he showed you how to do it. You oh. know, and he showed, and he was just that way in a lot of different areas of life. Okay. So, um, yeah, I love that man. Best man at my wedding. Oh. So, yeah, so I did radio, and uh, our show, our Saturday night all request retro party, became the number one show in the market. We really? we had no playlist. We would play literally whatever you wanted. Gilligan's Island theme into Madonna into Convoy, you okay. know, into whatever you wanted to hear. Okay, and we had that's fun. fun. Yeah, we were just crazy. We were actually dropping needles on records. Yeah. You know, we're like, wow, this that is, ages you too, right? That's cr- well, this seventies and eighties. Yeah, I didn't say it. Yeah, <laughs> but but I mean, but this wasn't in the seventies and eighties. That was just the music we we're playing, right. and some of that music, all we had were the old records, records yeah. right? And I'm hoping anyone listening to this podcast knows what that is. What Al- vinyl's still around? Oh, yeah. well, it's, it's coming back. Yeah, a lot of those big, okay. big artists are are putting out uh, vinyl, vinyl with yeah. everything else. So that led to a 12 year career in 12, 13 years in radio. Okay, and, yeah, with uh, in management as a program director or a morning guy, or excuse me, uh, ended up being uh, mornings for about about seven years of that. 
Okay. That was, that was a really good time. It was good and bad. Yeah. Yeah. Early mornings, though, right? Yeah. Very early, very taxing. I still remember the first gig I got, I think, was at, um, it was at WIOG in Saginaw. And I asked uh, the guy in Rockford, Illinois. I had actually gotten an afternoon gig, an APD gig in uh, Rockford at ZOK. And I said to the morning guy, Shannon, I was like, buddy, what, I'm going to be a morning guy for the first time. What should I know? And he said, you're going to be tired all the time. Yeah. That's all you need to know. You're going to be tired all the time. And he was right. You were, you were constantly not getting enough sleep. I mean, you're out by like... 11 probably in the morning right oh you're well you're you're still no you're working a you're working a day really oh yeah you're still you're still working the whole day because so there was live shoots i mean you're oh you know you're out doing your thing that sounds horrible you know it wouldn't it was it, when people ask me if i miss radio i always say the same thing now and it's an honest answer i miss the act of broadcasting like this right here is a joy to me yeah i haven't done this in years really to be able to sit down throw the cans on and talk into a mic about anything yeah so this is this is a really this is a treat for me yeah that's i that's why i love podcasting how often like ben and i talk about how often are you sit across from your friend for hour hour and a half and no phones going off nothing and you're just like talking yeah. about real stuff you know <laughs> no screen time and all that yeah right. it doesn't yeah. happen very often even though i say that we have all this tech i hope stuff. there's <laughs> yeah no i hope there's lots of screens going right, <laughs> right i hope right, somebody's right. watching Right. So, you know, radio went for a while. I went to lots of different cities. I'm giving you a long answer here. You, no. you told me it was an hour show. So no, so it's like, I we I try f- for the guests to keep it under an hour, but if you want to talk, you just go ahead and talk. You'll never, give me, no- sh- you'll never give me the show. Uh, I'll just turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> after the uh after radio uh you know, candy, like they they get bought out, they get flipped, stations, yeah. whatever happens. I said I wasn't gonna leave Grand Rapids because when I, when I moved to IOG in Saginaw, I it was exactly what I thought Michigan was going to be. I hated it. It was blight. It was dirty. It was, I'm like, this is what, what I thought Michigan was going to be. Yeah. And so far, it's like, whatever. Still, I bought a house, got yeah. married, you know, and I thought, this is what I'm going to try and do this. This is my life. <laughs> Pay, it was paying well at that time. Okay. And I was like, okay, this is really good money. Yeah. So I'll, I'm going to do this. And then when they actually promoted me within a company, which is like never heard of in radio, and I came to Grand Rapids, it was like the Emerald City. It was like it was like Dorothy. I was looking at it going, there's a downtown. There's a skyline. It's not Pe- so dirty. People actually want to go to do things. Right. And, and it's such a good community, and it's so close to the lake. I was like, "Where? Is, this isn't Michigan. I, I got drunk on the Kool-Aid. I, yeah. I couldn't. I wasn't going to leave Grand Rapids no matter what. So... When that happened, and they they canned a bunch of people, including me, I was like, "I'm staying." So you went from the station in Saginaw, the the same station here owned the station in Saginaw, right, the so same you company. Moved, oh, that's yeah, interesting. Yeah, yeah. Which rarely happens in radio. Yeah, but yeah, we had a, they were looking for a morning guy here, and and we had, and we enjoyed some some good successes. I met some really good people. Yeah, but you know, then I then you know, I had a new baby. Mm. Just came. I literally came back from my honeymoon. I've just noticed that I've said literally a lot. So you slap me next time I say. Yeah, I know that's a that's a word that a lot of people say. Yeah, that, I've said that's like ten now. Okay, there's going to be a tick mark. Is that, go back and watch is this. Is that your crutch word? There's, I, evidently, <laughs> I didn't know it until now. But there's going to be like a shot game for me. I'll, I'll honestly say I didn't notice it because I'm just enthralled in your story. But <laughs> I, I, I do notice it. it when I listen to podcasts. I was like, if you say like one more time, yeah, I'm going to oh, drive off the road. Mm-hmm, yeah. Or if somebody asks a question and they go, so they start with so. That always uh. bothers me. <laughs> Not the uh, the uh, town came to me and and I love this. I came back from my honeymoon, starting this gig in Grand Rapids. So wow. here, so here I am, place to live, new child, um, great daughter Grace, and uh, married, and thinking this is going to be great, making the best money I've ever made in my career, so you're like a top money, of your game, more money than I thought radio would even pay. Right, I was like, wow, this is really good. We're going to do well. Yeah, you know, and then of course, radio. Yep. See ya. <laughs> We're moving in a different direction. <laughs> that happens no matter how good or bad you do. Oh, so. man. Yeah. So let's just fast forward to now. Now you're working for Fox 17. Yeah. Yeah. I did a little stint with M Live in between okay. as, a, as a journalist for a few years. And then um, just as a writer? Entertainment concierge was my actual title. Like that, that's it, what they created. Yeah. Which I took as I'm, I get tips. Right? right, but that that's not how it turned so out. So you liked MC things? Like? I was ba- I was basically for a good time call guy. 
I'm not kidding. That's what my job turned out to be. They had people who would cover the ballet and the symphony. They had people yeah. who would cover concerts, but they had nobody who, that was covering the events. Like the, movies on the, Monroe. The charity. Exactly. Okay. The things that you were going to bring your family to, the, the great things that you were going to do, the, the Irish on Ionias and all those types of things. Nobody was really covering those. So they created this position for That's me. That's kind of fun. It was a great job. Yeah. And I had a, had a great time doing it. Plus, it was deadline based. So it wasn't punch the clock at 6 a.m. and do your, you know, it was. Get this many stories done, cover this, this but you know, do your thing. So, with a newborn daughter who, uh, you know, I'd been unemployed almost the first, you know, a lot of like seven, eight months of the first year or so of her life. Okay. So, I was in, I was all in. I was waking up, diaper, all. I mean, we were spending every day together. Right. All day together. So, to have that flexibility with this new job, you know, there were days when I was 10 a.m. still in my PJs, typing away in the stories. Somebody's taking a nap, you know. Hey. It was, a, it, was, it, it was a blessing to have that. So what happened to M Live? I thought like, does M Live and the GR Press do they own each other? Like, M Live is the digital version of Grand Rap. They're the same company. Yeah, that's yeah, what I thought. The, it's the same thing. So why did they lay all these people off if they're a digital company? No. That's where everyone's going. Well, because selling digital advertising, they're giving away their content. Okay, yeah. they're giving it away. Yeah, that's true. There's you have subscriptions to the paper. You don't have a subscription to MLive.com. I mean, you yeah, can that, you can get one. That's true, you know. But they're giving away the content and really relying on that digital ad revenue to come in to cover the loss of subscriptions. And I don't think they they knew how much of a hit that was going to be. Excuse me a second. Oh, that's fine. I, I should probably to... check mine. I don't even know where my phone. No, is. No, Brutus is down here, and I was asked. Meg, oh, hey, Brutus. Megan to grab Brutus. Not that it's ended. Brutus world. has been on the show before, right? He has, but he gets caught in the cords, oh. and that's the biggest problem. You're so good, you're good, Brutus. Yeah, she's right coming down to grab him. Okay, but um. Yeah, it's disappointing because I love M Live stuff. Yeah. Um, it's it's one of those things where that's where I get my news anymore. I don't read uh Rudy. <laughs> Brutus. Come here. Brutus. Just tell him you're gonna give him a T R E. You can't say it. you have to spell it like a child. You have yeah. to spell the word. You want Hey. <laughs> he knows what's happening. You yeah. say he'd ignored her. <laughs> Thanks, babe. Um Hi Brutus, I love you. Oh, he's not happy. No, he's not. Yeah, so I um I really, that's why I get my news. I don't read the paper anymore. Right, so right. MLive is, um, but you know what? I don't, and we'll, I get off this, but the comments on those, it's, it's insane. A, it's a full-time job. It's, we, they have a Zane, I think Zane McMillan was his name when I was there. And it was his full-time job was to moderate social media. It's so gross. It is. I mean, no. It, well, especially when you can be anonymous. Right. And you can be anonymous there. Uh, Zane does a new thing now where he says how many comments before someone mentions trump oh, like yeah. if it's like either it's for or against it's mm-hmm. kind of a funny thing it's gonna it's come like, up oh i can't imagine that so yeah social media has become a uh a testy place right testy place. i don't really use it much other than for the brands i have other Same than here. that i don't really yeah do anything i used to do a lot a lot more than i than i do now yeah yeah i kind of just it's <laughs> <laughs> not that important people no. don't need to know everything i'm doing no it's, they really don't yeah so it's changed yeah so much so um you get married uh you have grace and then things don't work out i've divorced too so it happens um what uh inspired you to start the daddy daughter time organization that uh, would be it to be and I'm and I'm glad you asked. And thank you for the opportunity to talk about yeah, the organization. For sure. Thank you. That's I'm so excited to be able to. Sh- <laughs> I'm not kidding. I love any platform I can get right. to tell people about this nonprofit. It really was a a time in my life when, let's just say, I wasn't prepared to be divorced. Mm-hmm. So when that happened, I had to quickly understand I'm going to be a single father. Now, the first thing that happens when you find out you're going to be divorced. If that's how it happens to you, I mean, sometimes it's mutual, sometimes it's not. But when it's not, and you find out that's happening to you, you immediately go through the grief of numerous things: mm-hmm. the grief of a lost, rela- a failed relationship, uh, the grief of a, a lost partnership. Uh, for me, those things had been tumultuous for a long time. So for me, the grief that hit me was the grief of. The loss of my daughter. Yeah. It was really honestly was the driving force behind any grief that went around that whole situation was yeah. I thought I was going to see her every morning. Mm-hmm. I was going to, I was going to take her to school. We were yeah. going to do homework together. We yeah. were, we were going to, I was going to teach her, you know, how am I going to do that? 
Yeah. You know, when she's not here. And so that was, you know, that was a process for me to go through uh, to realize that I wasn't going to be part of her life every day. And that was a really hard thing for me to fathom. Mm -hmm. But I think what I'm good at is taking any type of negative situation and internalizing it. How can I make it positive and externalizing that? That's what I try to do with anything negative that enters my life is how can I turn this into something good? Uh, I mean, I'm not going to sit here and rot my gut crying yeah. about how this happened. Yeah. So, you know, when I went online to find out information about single parenting and single fatherhood, there is a lot of great information for dads online. Fatherhood.gov. There's many different sites yeah. that'll help you be a good father if you're going to be a single dad. So that was covered. All right, yeah. good. I got, I got some advice. Right. I got some good dad tips over yeah. here. That's good. And then... What about us going out and doing things together? Okay, I'm going to see her on these weekends. We're going to we're still working out the custody. What what is it going to be? What is it not going to be? But I know it's not going to be full time. So, yeah. so what are we going to do when we're together? How can I, you know, make things fun? So I look for events. You know, I, you know, my past. I was the entertainment concierge. Yeah, <laughs> I'm always like, what can we go out and do? You right. Know? What can we have fun? And of course, there's plenty of home stuff we can do. Yeah. But I was looking for both. Yeah. I wanted to do, spend quality time alone at home, but I wanted to take her out and have a good time. And and I just noticed that there is so much mommy and me stuff. Now, I say that, and somebody watching might think, oh, He-Man Woman Haters Club. Mm -hmm. And that's not the case at all. Yeah. For, for, uh, for me personally and for the organization, which is really an extension of, of myself, right. is – we want every single kid to have two loving, active, and involved parents. Okay, and if they have step parents, them too. Okay, right. we want that's what we want. Uh, but when it comes to options for dads, there just wasn't a lot of that. You had your school dance, yeah. right? And so I, I cannot wait till the school dance is the done. Daddy daughter I dance. got one more, and I, I, she don't want it. She don't. She wants to go do with hang with their friends, right? So this is what I do. I go there. I sit down. She dances with her friends. The slow songs come on. We do our dance, and then that's it. But I have one more year of that. There's like a checklist. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and, and that's fine. I mean, some daughters in there, are you can see them there, are in love with their dads, but mm -hmm. my daughter's independent, and she wants to do her own thing. Sure. So, yeah. but. <laughs> and that's good. Yeah. I mean, but you being there means right. something. You yeah, being for there sure. means something. Yeah. The process before and after the fact that you took her. Yeah. Because, you know, when she's 30 and looking back, yes. you did that. Like, you took the time out of your day right. to drive her there, sit in the corner like a little wallflower. That, right. You just you just described my high school prom for me. Right. Thanks for that. Me much, too. That's pretty much how it was for me. <laughs> I was like, oh, everybody's dancing. I'll sit over here and sip some punch. Right. But the uh, – yeah, we want there to be two – I mean, this isn't a, an anti-woman club. This is a pro-dad club. This right. is a – we want to give fathers more options, more advice, more encouragement to be active and involved in a young girl's life. That is that is the end goal mission, right? And it came out of a gut feeling, and it, but it's not a gut feeling anymore. And that's what I really hope your listeners hear. Yeah, that it isn't just some guys. Oh, aren't they good dads? Aren't they? Be that may be true, but what that means that active and involved parenting is scientifically proven now. Okay, oh, yeah. this, this there, I mean they. And you say, oh, yeah, like, of course, it's a given. They weren't even doing the research until the 80s. Right. I say that, but, I, yeah, I know. It. I mean, it was, it's shocking to me. I'm like, I'm going to find some. I'm going to go dig. I'm going to go to the libraries. I'm going to go to the Google. I'm going to find yeah. some stats on. Because people wanted to, you know, say you should turn a nonprofit. And I'm, because we were in LLC. Okay. Well, you know, and, and I'm like, I'm going to turn a nonprofit. I, I need some data on why this is important beyond what I think it is. Yeah. And when learning that they hadn't even started studying the effects of fatherhood on their kids until the 80s, hmm. I was like, my goodness. Yeah. I mean, I, we were really were stuck in the 50s mad men thing. Yeah. You were a protector. You were a paycheck. Yeah. Okay? You just worked. You came home. Dinner was on the table. Right. And she took care of the house and the kids. I yeah. mean, and the lines were so crystal clear. Right. So they didn't even think to do a study on the effect of fatherhood on kids because... He's not with the kids. Right. You know, <laughs> he's out with the boys in the golf course after a hard day at work yeah. or whatever, you know, <laughs> throw back some scotch you know, or whatever that was, you know. Smoking in the delivery room. <laughs> right. I have no idea. They didn't even let him in the delivery room. Oh, really? They didn't even let my dad in the delivery room. You weren't even allowed. Yeah. This, it was a really weird time, that right? Weird you you time. can't think of that now that you're not no. going to be present for the birth of your child, but yeah. they wouldn't even let the man in there. That's absurd. So, but yeah. And that absurdity there, that feeling that you just said, that reaction is what we're hoping 
it, more people say when they're like, what are you talking about? There's not more done on the, the effects of fatherhood. But now we're at a time when it really is taken off. And what they found was that uh, – so now you got 30 years of study, almost 40 years of study. So now you know the effects. These women have – these young girls have grown up. They did a whole bunch of people, Boston College, uh, Family College, yep. and others, found that an active and involved father lowered teen pregnancy rates. Yeah. Okay, it lowered jail time. It lowered drug use. It lowered school dropout. It raised self-esteem. It raised body image. It raised vocabulary. It raised pretty much all the things that you want to go this way up. And there wasn't one exception. All the things that wanted hmm. to go down, down. Okay. So when I saw that study, I printed that sucker and bookmarked that site and yeah. said, I'm going to live off this Bible because yeah. this has got some real data to it. And I read a bunch of boring case study this and case, yeah. you know, but I wanted to really know. Yeah. And yeah, it's science. If you if you put the time into her, you're not just doing something good as it for yourself, but right. you, even though you are. Yeah. Because there is an effect on on you as a that's another thing we can get into is what the effect of fatherhood has on men. Yeah. And the, what it really it does physically and psychologically change you. Hmm. You are you are altered when you become a father. They say it's a life changing experience. It literally there's the word, but I get it. I used no, it right, but properly. I used it right, right. That's properly. It is a life changing experience. For a parent, for women, women and men, yeah, it physically and psychologically changes your body, and uh, and so and that's true for men. So when you have that behind you and you think, okay, I've got uh, a lot of data here, I think a nonprofit's the right way to go. Okay. I mean, this is something that that I think people can should get behind because there's you know you don't have to think this is just us wanting to be great dads. Right. This, this, this is something that is yeah, well, scientifically you're proven. About it. You know, well, and it's something that's going to be good for Grace. Yeah. I know that the more active and involved I am in her life, these positive things could happen for her. They're not guaranteed. Right. But they sure aren't going to, if I'm not going to be there at all. Right. You know, that's right. not going to happen. So one thing I wanted to bring up, and I may have seen this on your personal page, I you had working on father's rights and, yeah. may, and maybe i'm wrong but i saw that it was a while back but sure. i remember you posting something yeah what was that about um in the court system is that what you were trying to push yeah obviously with my history of, of really battling and 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 paying through the nose through family court just to get the time that i got yeah uh, which was you know still not 50 50 but there's a long like i said there's a long distance here yeah um between me and my ex the uh so the nonprofit itself isn't a, a a part of this correct but something that we do believe in and yeah. that is the uh, americas for equal and shared parenting and uh, it's an organization that has a pretty simple mission and some states have passed it already michigan it didn't get out of committee uh, uh last year okay but when you when you get divorced and you're a dad and you're in family court because you and your ex can't agree on how much time you get with the kids yep I think most men would agree that when you walk into that courtroom, you are behind the eight ball. Yep. You you automatically think, okay, I'm going to get every other weekend, maybe Wednesdays, two and two weeks in the summer. That seems to be what Standard. the court has approved as – that's an uncle, okay? Yeah. That, that's, a, that's a visitor is yeah. what that is. You are, you are not active and involved in her life uh, in a way that is meaningful yeah. with that amount of time. Nope. And so what they're trying to pass – and it seems so simple, and we get such there's such crazy blowback on, on a, that I don't quite get is for a judge or the referee or whoever you're talking to yeah. to legally have to start at fifty fifty. If you you have to pass a couple of things, you have two active and involved parents that that are fit. They're okay. They're not drug addicts. They're not alcoholics. They're not beating their child. Right. Okay. They are fit and willing parents that both want to parent this child. You've got that. Start at fifty fifty. Okay. Okay. And if you're not going to do 50-50 because of whatever, because of distance in my case or, or whatever it is, yeah. then you write a ruling. You don't just rubber stamp. How it works now is you go in and you try to fight and prove that you're not evil. that you're not, And you can face all sorts of slander and liable and you can, you can straight up, you know, straight up, what, what, do they, what do they call that when you, when you lie under oath? I mean, perjury. Perjury. You can face, <laughs> you can face any of that. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 and many men do. Yep. And so... To be, and you're just trying to get more time with you know a reasonable decent amount of time yeah. with your kids. So this organization fights for that legislation to pass, and they've gotten a few states to automatically do that. Um, and so yeah, that that was something that I felt pretty passionate about. I got a chance to go to Lansing, uh, was ready to speak. They ran out of time, but many of people that I know did get a chance to speak. Okay, 
And it was, it was a really, I think it's a really good cause. It just makes common sense to me that if you have that, they're not getting along. They're not being able to work it out themselves. Start here and then rule it out. Cause what'll happen now is you'll go in there and that's the, the rubber stamp will happen. They'll figure it out with the referee and whatever the referee says, the judge is going to say, yeah. Yeah. I mean, the ju- you're, you're, you're not even going to see a judge. Yeah. You're going to see a referee, friend of the court. They're going to figure it out. The judge is going to be like, yeah, it looks good to me. Boom, 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 boom. So to be able to at least not feel like you're behind an eight ball when you walk in the door saying, okay, we're going to start at 50 50 and let's work this, hash this out. Yeah. It's going to save a lot of time. It's going to save a lot of money. So obviously they're not, they're not for this. Right. <laughs> Family court banks. I don't oh, know. Yeah. If, I mean, they, yeah. they make bank. Yeah. And, and there's really not a lot of regulation on that. So they don't have a, a strong desire to change the system that is really raking in hundreds of millions of dollars. They don't want to change that. Yeah, I can relate on a little bit because I was divorced. It was a terrible divorce. We fought a lot. After about two years, I said, this isn't worth it anymore. So I stopped fighting. But um, I would always have the winners off because I'm a seasonal worker. And I tried to go in there and get more time to a, I went to a judge and I'm not going to uh, name the judge, but nothing like I was like I want him more time I'm off in the winners um I can spend more time with him and they would not budge and they're like they're not we're not going to change it unless the situation has changed yeah. I said yeah it's changed I'm home in the winter mm-hmm. I can spend more time with them nope not going to do it yeah they once that's why I did invested the crazy amount of money that I begged borrowed and stole not that didn't steal any well, to get to where I am yeah because I knew that once something is set like that, it's un- hard to reverse un- it. Un- unless unless somebody's beaten the children, yeah. or is or is arrested, or is a, a drug addict, or something happens extreme that could harm the child, that that's that's the bass backwards thing about it. Yeah, is the only way they're going to change that is if something could be in the situation that could harm the child. Yep. But if something changes where the situation could help the child, yeah, positive. <laughs> There's just no, there's no consideration at all. Well, I think the problem is, is there's so many deadbeat dads yeah, that this yeah. is the standard. Exactly. And, and if you don't, you know, like, oh, this is, this is all you want. And I wanted to relate back to the part where you talked about getting divorced and then we'll jump back into sure. daddy daughter. Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. um, it was tough. I walked out that door and I instantly knew I was a part-time dad. Mm-hmm. Like it's that second. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's not like you work into it. It's mm-hmm. just like, burp, and every other weekend and, it was it was tough. It was tough to do that, and um, I I don't know how your divorce went, but as far as it was, I I know I screwed him up a little bit. You know, I know he internalizes stuff because of that. And if anything, I can say to people, just it's I know everyone says it, but try not to put the kid involved. Like, don't. It's just don't. It's just not worth it. And I met my beautiful wife Megan, and she brought me down a little bit, and she was like, "Hey, let's take the high road." Yeah. Let's. And I was like. I would get angry because right. she, she would take them away from me and blah, blah, blah. blah. The, so. the high road is a hard place, but at the end, in the end, it's going to be better for your kids. Yeah. When they get old enough to realize what happened. Yes. And when they look back, when they're old enough to make up their own mind about who their parents were, yeah. they'll be able to decide for yeah. themselves you know, who did what. It's tough to take the high road. But though. boy, it sucks. <laughs> it's so hard. <laughs> Nobody wants to. It's hard and it's arduous and it's long and you don't, get, and there's no guaranteed payoff here. You know, no. no, there's, there's none of that. But just there is something to be said for knowing that your heart's in the right place. There's yeah. something to be said. For not to get too religious about it, but there's something to be said that oh, some, we, we'll talk about that. Yeah, somebody knows. Okay, there's, there's, there's. Yeah, this is Avery Teary speaking. Thank you so much for listening to Threads Podcast, Life Unfiltered. Please rate, review, and subscribe to my dad's podcast. I hope you enjoy hearing future episodes. If you like what you're listening to, don't forget to listen to their other podcast, Dear Roger Adventures. Have a great day, Thread listeners. There's going to be a day of reckoning for all of us. Yeah. You know? So do what do what's best in your heart. Yeah. That's tough. So. <laughs> yeah. That's not easy. Parenting. <laughs> Who knew? Yeah. Right? Yeah. I mean, I got, I'm so spread out. I have a 22-year-old, <laughs> and then I have an 11-year-old uh, and a 9-year-old. Yeah. So that's like, 
I got quite the you, gamut. You've got completely different worlds. Yeah. yeah. I got one that's graduating next month from, he's going to be an airplane mechanic. So he's going to be on like his own job and right. making good money. And then I'm raising these little ones too. And it's mm-hmm. just like, uh, he's a good kid though. As much as I feel that he's going to need some therapy because mm-hmm. uh, he internalizes everything, he's still a good kid. He stayed away from alcohol. He stayed away from drugs. He wants to fix airplanes. He's He's got his eye on the prize. So good. I got to... And his mom helped too. I, I can't com- no, completely no. do that. I mean, no. surprisingly enough, is how how bad it was. He's living with her right now, so because I have curfews, you know what I mean. <laughs> it's kind of like if you come here, I know you're 22, but you got to be home at a certain time because I right. don't want to worry about you. Right. So, but anyways, so back to daddy daughter time. Um, so it's about what three years in. Four we years. are officially going on six. Oh, geez. Yeah, as, as a non- as a non- no as a nonprofit. Yeah, going on three. Okay, oh, okay. But as as a when it started, I was like, how can I do something that is going to the what I'd mentioned before? There weren't a lot of options for dads to spend time yeah. with young girls. Okay, so what am I going to do about it? I had a side, uh, still making okay money. Okay, working for the press. Yeah, wasn't too much of a pay cut. <laughs> 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 but 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 I had a side gig. And I was doing social media work for a, another nonprofit, and I was making a few hundred bucks there a month. Oh, uh, they were paying you to do the social media? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I was like, hey, listen, I'm, I do social media. I'm pretty active in it. Let me carry your brand for you and build your, your base nice. and, and, and interact with your audience. And so I was doing that, and I basically just taking all of the money that I made from them and putting it into this. Okay. So that way, I, I have my main salary, but my gravy money yeah. is going to go towards this. Okay. Yeah. And so doing that, was I think I held an ice cream social is what I did okay. at uh, Jersey Junction. My friend Elias Olivares owns the joint, and he gave me a great deal on the ice cream. Jersey Junction is that? East Grand Rapids. Yeah, East Grand yep. Rapids. Yep. Yep. Cool little joint, right? It yeah. has the train going through it and the old school candy and the waffle cones are being made right there, so uh, it smells great. And I've never been there, but yeah, that it's really cool. amazing. The guy who uh, used to own it, or his mom, the mom of the guy who wrote Polar Express, the Van Allsburg family. Oh. So the guy who wrote Polar Express... His mother owned that for, oh, wow. for, for years and years and years back in the day. Hmm. And so with that the train that you see in there is a you'll see a lot of Polar Express stuff in there. Okay. It's pretty cool. You knew Polar was local, right? Yeah, I yep. did know yeah. that. Yeah. Sorry. Everyone knows that. <laughs> so you know, I, I thought I'll just invite people out to an ice cream social. If there are dads and daughters that want some free ice cream, because that's what I'm doing, I'm passing yeah. out free ice cream, that that'll draw some people. Yeah. And like thirty people showed up. Wow, that's huge when for was, your first thing. Right, right. I'm like, cool. I had, you know, I had like a 10, 15 dads show up with their kids, their yeah. daughters. And, you know, something really cool happened at that event that kind of inspired me to go, I'm going to do this again. And there was a dad sitting next to another dad, small little ice cream shop table. And he asked, I overhear him, hey, did you braid her hair? Like, did you do that? And the dad actually said yes, which surprised me. Yeah. Right. I was like, he said, yeah, I did that. He goes, hey, you're going to have to show me how to do that. These guys don't know each other. Wow. And here they are bonding over their kids. Cause as men, we suck at that. Yeah. I mean, we suck at bonding over our kids. Yeah. You meet another guy you don't know. Your conversation is going to go to, what do you do for a living? Yep. And are you Sparty or Blue? Okay. <laughs> it's really, or God forbid, a Buckeye. I mean, right, that's right, what, right. So you're going to go over sports. Yeah. Or you're going to go over this or whatever stereotypical masculine thing yeah. that you're going to bond over. But you're not going to go to another guy who has kids when you have no. kids and go like, where'd you get that dress for her? You know? <laughs> Which I have actually done yeah. at, at certain things, but maybe I'm an exception where I'm like, hey, where did, it was a mother. And I was like, you're going to have to tell me where you got that outfit because right. I want that on my daughter. <laughs> <laughs> you know? And so that's why I was shocked at that happening. Yeah. And I'm like, I have to do this again. This is not only good for the girls to spend yeah. time together. And I didn't know about the data or the science or any of that stuff yet. I was just like, I want dads well, to inspiring. have... Yeah. I want dads to have more options to do things with their, with their girls. Yeah. So I'm going to do this. So about every quarter, we do, uh, we do some events. And then more, you know, people started, I mean, obviously people started showing up because it was free. Yeah. Everything was free. Right. You just showed up and free stuff happened for you. And I thought that's really great because I didn't want there to be any barrier between anybody and their daughter. I didn't want him to be like, well, I'd love to go out and spend time, but I don't have 20 
bucks a head to well, do that. Especially in Dutch West Michigan. You say free and like <laughs> yeah. everyone's like... Err. So I shouldn't be surprised that they showed up for the ice cream right. social. I just think saying. 30 is quite, is quite <laughs> a bit. Was, I'm pretty sure it was about that many. It's like I said, six years ago. Yeah. But so, you know, it just grew. And then as an LLC, I started, I really fight it. I fought this, but started to sell tickets, you know, for a small cost. So I've, now I'm selling things for like five bucks. So I can just bring something in because more and more people are showing up. Yeah. And that stipend Costs. that I'm getting from the other nonprofit on my side gig isn't covering it. Right. And I'm like, okay, this is going to hurt. Yeah. I really got to start making this happen as a business. And, and that's when the ideas of the memberships came in. We tried the Netflix monthly thing for a while where you can just buy it month to month and that was just a nightmare. Well, yeah, because people quit and then all of a sudden you got no money. <laughs> right. The once a year is the way to go. Yeah. So we went through an annual and, and after I got that data I told you about um, and other scientific research about the effects of just being a dad yeah. and how important it is and what it can do to you, I uh, decided, yeah, this is definitely a nonprofit. I think the, the, the really crux moment for our organization was a lunch with Kathy Bissell. Mm. Kathy Bissell from Bissell Incorporated, yep. you know, the Bissell Pet Foundation. I knew her because I had interviewed her through M Live, the M Live gig. Yeah, I got over to her house, talked to her dogs. who were doing a story on the the big pet thing that that, that they do, and the and the now they're doing the empty the shelters events yeah. and stuff like that. But you know, I, I I knew that she had a heart for she had I mean she had this big pet foundation, yeah. so maybe I can get some advice from her. Yeah, on and how to start it. The and fact that she even took my call is amazing. I was just like, "Wow, she's going to have lunch with me." Yeah. So I went and had lunch with her, and and I explained, you know, do should I become a nonprofit or should I do this? Should I do, you know, this, I, I mean, I really don't know what to do. This right. is, you know, I wanted to just get advice. Maybe it was me being naive. I had no idea she was going to cut me a check, like on the spot, cut me a check, a g- the biggest check that I think to date that our organization has ever received. Really, just like right there, right there. And I was blown away, you know, <laughs> and I immediately stretched every dime of that yeah. check to the next year. Wow. I mean, I, I made that thing work for me. That's uh, great. Making deals. I came back to her the next year and she did, she did it again. Not as much, but she, but she still, still more than anybody else right. was, was donating to this organization. And I say, I should say business. It was still an LLC. Yeah. So here she is. Not getting a tax break on it. Oh, wait. It. So she was giving that She's money for an LLC? giving that money to an LLC. So, wow. I mean, if, if it was me, I'd if, be like, mm. if this organization goes where I, where I hope it goes, there will be a plaque or a statue or something of Kathy Bissell right, included sure. in this because it was her heart and her her generosity yeah. that happened, you know, for wow. the, that made us happen. It was funny because the third year she said, you're going to have to become a nonprofit or right. I'm going to have to explain where I, why I'm writing checks to somebody. Yeah, I mean, it, <laughs> it only goes so far where you're like, okay, red flags. <laughs> like, why are you just doing this? But no, she's she's just an angel of a person to me. Yeah. I mean, she's an amazing individual. And her heart, the heart that she has for, for dogs is, is inc- like the passion that I have for daughters. Yeah. You know, it's, it's amazing. Uh, we live that. So, yeah, I, I definitely wanted her support. I became a nonprofit. We got a board together and... I did, you know, the whole nonprofit for dummies route. I yeah. had no idea, but I got a good nonprofit lawyer and, and helped me through it. And, and, uh, now here we are three years later with a great, good model. Yep. Still getting some funding from Bissell, still getting some funding. Lax Enterprises, uh, gives us a bit too. Okay. Those are our two main corporate sponsors. Okay. And still able to keep the memberships super low. There's still really no excuse for a dad. Any, I, almost anybody can afford. So, and unless I went to, it's a hundred dollars still, right? For a year. Yeah. And so I did experience it and it was amazing. I mean, these events, I always go there. I'm like, you are spending way more <laughs> than what this costs. Cause it ends up to being like what? Eight bucks an event or, or pretty much for, for each person. No, eight bucks total. Oh, was, yeah. Was four, it? four bucks ahead. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. 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 I mean, we went to Craig's cruisers yeah. and like, we've done some, some great events. Yeah. Um, uh, where do you see daddy daughter in like five years? Like what would, what would your, in five years from now would be like my dream? Would it be your, could, my job? You want to be your full time job? Absolutely. Well, that makes sense. I love working. I mean, I don't get me wrong. I got my Fox 17 coffee mug here. Okay. Right. I, I love my job. I love yeah. the people I work with. If I had a choice to do that job or get paid the same or more to do this passion, yeah, I would follow my passion. Of I mean, course. it's a no brainer. It's, yeah. it's it's one of those deals where like I love what I do, but I love who I am. Yeah, and if I could do who I am, 
Does that sound good? That didn't, that didn't sound good. Okay. You know what I'm saying. <laughs> if I could put into practice who I am as a person and yeah. make that my livelihood – that would be that would be i'd feel like a like a major leaguer well I'd that's be like, wow i get to do what i love for a living yeah that's the idea that's right. the american dream do something that you love to do that's right. not work yeah you know and it's not work because I, I i put everything into this you should see my basement <laughs> it's really t- it's taken over yeah i don't have much storage oh. so uh yeah i i absolutely love it and it takes all the things that i'm good at and kind of puts them together i do it I, event planning i mean i did that for a long time yeah. or talked about events and knew all these people from my other jobs mm-hmm um, talking in front of people, you know, uh, no problem, not a problem. <laughs> Coming up with creative, wacky names for things. Morning show radio guy, not a problem. You know, and, and then being a dad and, and showing others, hey, listen, this is important. Yeah, this is nobody's perfect. We're not out here boasting about how great we are. We're 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 imperfect as any other parent. Yeah, but the fact that you take the time every month to carve out time, just one on one, that's intentional. By the way, yeah, you know, there were times when a lot of moms were like, hey, can we go? And and it's, it breaks my heart. I know. I bet it breaks my heart to say, of course we would love you there, but you can't come, okay? Because yeah. there needs to be one option for her, yeah. okay? It needs to be him. Yeah. Okay? At, at, the, at some point, there needs to be a time when she wants to turn to somebody or talk to somebody or do something with somebody. Yeah. And she has she needs one option, okay? It needs to be him because he needs to build that communication. He needs to build that bond to where. You know, if they don't talk to you when they're four, good luck when they're 14. Right. You know, start young, build those memories, those happy times that you had together, the cool things that you did so she feels comfortable approaching you. You know, I use the word approach and that brings up another topic. Is that, that's okay. I've probably gone well over an hour. No, no, you're actually not. Okay. We started a program called Dad Up. And the Dad Up program is just, me and the board getting together saying, what what's important in being a dad? Mm-hmm. Okay? So I love acronyms. I love wordplay. Man up, dad up, right? Yep. So we did the D-A-D-U-P is what it ended up being. And and so at each one of our events, uh, dads get our dad up card. Mm-hmm. That is going to encourage them in one of these five traits, the D-A-D-U-P, right? And I'll get to those. And then every Friday, there's an email now that's being sent out. Same thing, has dad advice. Has some tips on fatherhood. We're not preaching at you. We're just saying, hey, here's some great resources. These are some cool stories. Hey, did Tom Brady push his daughter off a cliff? We'll talk about that. You know, all that jazz. Yeah. So, and if you don't know that story, Google it. It's insane. I didn't see it, but I I, did. I heard someone talking about it. I did. I did. And it'll be my next blog. And I don't blog that much, but I'm blogging about kids and risk will be my next one. Okay. Because I currently have an almost three year old in a full leg cast. (laughs) So, oh wow! So I'll be I'll be dealing with that. Yeah, Daphne's a terror. She's great. <laughs> but dad up is dependable, approachable, devoted, understanding, and patient. And understanding and patience two different things, right? <laughs> right. So those five traits, we make sure that we encourage our dads every month. To work that into their daily parenting. Okay. And that's as far as the preachiness of our organization gets. That's it. We hand you a card. We send you an email saying, this is just a resource for you. If you needed a word to say, you know what? You're important. Right. Okay. What? Who you are to her, it could be a make or break for her. Yeah. So do do the best you can. You know, do the very I, best again as a I, father. I feel like if they make it out to the event and don't do anything in the dad up, at least they're, there. they're doing that. They're there. So that's no. connection. That's the win. Right. right, right. Even if they're just coming out to say, "Hey, this was a good deal for a good time," super. Whatever. Come out and have a great time. Yeah, come up. We're, that's 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 kind of half the battle. Right. For breaking the ice between you and a six year old, maybe, or, or yeah. you and a nine year old. You know, that's our wheelhouse right now. Doing the demographics, we're five to nine. Yeah, I feel like when Avery and I went there, she was really old. I mm-hmm. mean, she's eleven now, yeah. and it's been about a year. We so. have a good spike of eleven year olds actually. Oh, really? When I was doing the data. Okay, yeah. yeah. So I could say five to eleven, but there's this big dip in ten. But eleven's right back up. Oh, there. Yeah. well, that's good. Yeah, that's pretty neat. So you talked about a little bit of failure and not perfect. What is? And we always talk about this on on podcast. What's the biggest flop at a <laughs> daddy daughter event where you were like, oh no, oh no. <laughs> It's falling apart. <laughs> I mean, you, I don't know. Grace, has there ever been a daddy daughter event that completely flopped? There's been everyone that was just, oh, by the way, Grace is watching this. For those of you who didn't know, can't think of one, can you? See, you that'd put be her great. on the spot. I did. All right, moving on. <laughs> I'm sorry. I didn't mean to do that to you. No, you're putting me on the spot because honestly, 
a, if I was to think of one that didn't go well in my mind, I know there was one or two that I wasn't happy with, and I can't remember them. Maybe right. it's just because I have very good selective memory of. I'm one of those people who has a very hard time remembering when things happened. I do too because I'm always thinking about. You're always I, ahead. You're I'm, always. I'm, I'm, what are you doing? It's next? like that jet ski thing. Yeah, because when my it drives my wife crazy. By yeah. the way, remarried and had another daughter. Yeah. Good for my second wife, keeping it right in the wheelhouse. <laughs> you know? I said, thank you for giving me another daughter. And she goes, it's really, up, you know, genetically, yeah, it's, it's up to male. you. So. Yeah. <laughs> so, well, then I knew what I was doing. See? I'm a smart guy. I married you and had a daughter. <laughs> but I know there have been a couple. I tell you, when you're doing these things, we're such a small organization yeah. that before I had a board, and, be, and when I say a board, I mean volunteers. Oh, I mean, yeah, the, pe- yeah. the people who are on my board, there's two or three of them that are just basically, they just come out and they bust hump at an event to yeah. help out yeah. when they can. Yeah. You know, our board meetings are pretty short and sweet and infrequent because yeah. we're just busy people. And this isn't your official multi so working dollar. board. Yeah, so uh, I would say for sure. Yeah. It's a working board. And, and so before that happened, yeah, there were many times when I was just, when I, I wouldn't say the event failed, but I bit off way more than I could chew yeah. on my own. Like okay. I couldn't get it all. I I couldn't get the social media, the photography, the balloons, the this, the that, the, all the things done, and running around literally sweating. I remember the first um because we ended up adding a we ended up adding a dance. You know, we didn't do it right away, but like yeah. in the third year, we were like, okay, we should probably have a dance. Too. Yeah, I mean that's kind of a staple for right. daddy daughter, <laughs> right? So we did a spring fling, and I remember uh, setting that up and just thinking, I just spent all this time putting out fires. This happened, that happened, late registration, all the things that happened with event planning and the setup. And, the, and, and I had help. I had yeah. a little, I had my wife, yeah. you know, and I had a couple of people that were helping me set up, but the, the load was enough for seven or eight and yeah. we had three, Ooh. you know. And so I remember thinking that was a failure because I never bonded, never talked to anybody. Yeah. All I did was, was, was run from one thing to the next. You're just putting out fires. Yeah. Yeah. And what I really want to do is, is, I want to see what's happening. I want to be able to read how these things are affecting the people that are there. Yeah, you want to go back to the ice cream spot where that first day right. you heard that dad say that. I want to be that. able to watch that and yeah. see that happen. Because what a lot of these guys didn't know, you know, when they went to that ice cream social in the next few events, that was almost more for me. <laughs> it really was <laughs> yeah. than it was for those dads. Right. Because it was like, I don't get to see my girl every day. I don't get to hug her and kiss her every day anymore. Yeah. That doesn't get to happen for me. Right. And that is killing me. Right. So here's the cool thing. I get to watch all of you do it. <laughs> you're my therapy. Right. You don't even know it. <laughs> you, know? you guys don't even know you're my therapy. That's you know? great. Because you know? <laughs> they were just like, because I got to see something really beautiful happen. And that's why we still... And I'm always making up these stupid things, but it, it, they stick sometimes. Yeah. Because I'm like, okay, there are going to be two rules at each one of our events. They've held true for the past 72 months, right? 70 plus events that we've done. Right. And you know the rules. The first rule is if every, any dad sees this and thinks it's a good thing, they have tell to another tell another dad. dad. That's yep. it. You know another dad with a daughter. You know we can afford this. And if not, gift him, yeah. you know, and get him here. You know, help help him too. Right. And then the only rule that I have for the daughters, which still holds true, is... At the beginning of the event, when I'm addressing everybody, find your dad, hug him and kiss him and tell him you love him. Yep. That is it. Yeah. And I get to see all this awesome. I won't get reclaimed on your podcast. Here. I'm going to get a little teary. <laughs> but I get to see all of this awesome love yeah. getting shared. Yeah. And it's the best feeling. It's my most favorite part of any event we have. Because okay. I get to see that happen. And I'm like, this so, is so good. That's amazing. That is so good to see. You know, So that that's kind of the... The payoff for me, yeah, you know, is I'm like cool, and I hope that this really does help a lot of a lot of dads and daughters. I think it will. I mean, it's 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 not, and it's not that big of a commitment either. You're talking like what a three hour event once a month. I mean, if that, yeah. if that, yeah, and it, and it is one of those deals where you don't make this one. There's one next month. Yeah, you know, you're still getting that email every Friday. Right, you're still getting that that card if you show up. You reach out. I mean, the funny thing is, is I think dads, some of these dads have been in this three or four years now and have met other dads that they didn't know and have watched each other's daughters grow up. Yeah. It's weird. Cause some of, for me, it's weird. Yeah. Some of these girls are coming and they're like nine. And I remember when they were four. Yeah. And I'm like, <laughs> this is That's, nuts. It is kind of bizarre. To, to watch them grow up. 
So I love it, and I'd love to see it grow. I'd love begging for begging for any type of support that okay. we can, that we can get. I mean, if there was if there was a hat out, I would have it out all the time. Yeah, you know, and we have this thing on our site that never took off. It's still there, where you can put a monthly recurring donation of whatever you want on there. Yeah, and I don't know how to do that stuff. I'm not a director of development as good. At, you know, I mean, <laughs> right? I try to be. I try to grow us, and and I hope. To God, I, I pray to God that I'll be able to find a way to continue. Well, you this. need to get someone on your board that does right, that. Right. Yeah, you know, I'm yeah. on a committee for another organization I volunteer for, and they're like, "We need a fundraiser person." Like, I'm like, "That's not me," but right. I understand you need somebody to kind of right. hustle. Up. There needs to be a new president of our board, and I'm the president of the board. Yeah, and I'm saying there probably needs to be a new president of the board. There needs to be somebody who has more nonprofit experience, right? Doing this and building this board development thing, yeah. Because honestly, still carrying a lot of the load here. Yeah, lots to do with yeah. the web and the, the last event. I'm photogging it myself, oh. so I'm doing a lot, carrying a lot of different things. But again, when you love what you're doing, right. it doesn't feel like work to me. But that brings up a good question: How can you spend time with Grace right. when you're? Right. I mean, you're going to have to notch out some other time sure. other than that because like you're working right yeah um, at these events we get to go do it and, and i have her the entire summer minus a week and a weekend oh okay amazing. so so this is amazing for me this is my time my, yeah this is my bonding time we grow closer together we get to really connect and talk and sit around the fire pit and do well it, i appreciate you know, taking the time then no well, she's just... here she wanted to well, i i was she was even playing with the neighbors on the trampoline i'm like are you sure you want to go it's, it was a couple of dudes in a room with microphones right. she was like yeah i want to go so, I'm like, so okay I'm, I'm, I'm super thrilled that she's here yeah so i'm glad that she's here but um i'm sorry i lost your question the uh just um not being able to spend time with her uh, at sure. the event yeah. that you create yeah. this awesome event that you created a lot of times i'll and she asked me this the other day, uh, I think about a month ago, about why we don't get to do daddy daughter events together. Because mm. I schedule them when she's not here. Mm. You know, a lot of times I'll schedule these events purposefully I mean, around when she's not here. Yeah, it kind of makes sense. Because I, I mean, we're gonna, I'm gonna be working. Well, it's and, not, and, that, and over the summer I'll do some when she's here. Yeah, because I we're here we're together for weeks at a time. Yeah, but during the school year when I have a weekend. There, there's never a daddy daughter event okay. on a weekend when she's Smart. here because that's I'm I'm gonna see her like maybe two three days that month. I'm not gonna be out doing that. Well, yeah, everyone thinks you know you know pull the curtains back even for our podcast. You know, you see this, you think, well, there's a lot of work on the back end. So your three hour event, you may have worked. Oh man, four hours before that, and then then two days before that, mm. you were putting in time. So it's not just like you just show up and. Do, do, do. <laughs> Dude, we're, we're we're designing the logos for each event. We're ordering oh. this because we ha we have these cool things called Dad Venture passports now. Something else that we that I dreamt up, right? So it's this little passport booklet, okay, that has like what we do. Thing, favorite thing my dad did, place for a photo or a drawing, a little place for a stamp so you can get your your dad venture passport Ooh, stamped. So you have a physical idea. thing, a little journal of what you did with your dad that you can use this with our events, with any of it, whatever you want to yeah. do. We got loads of these things. We want we print, have a whole bunch of those printed up. So there's always something that I'm doing, <laughs> you know, or, and there's probably more that I should be doing. Yeah. But I would, no, when it comes to time with her, I don't let this get yeah. in the way of that she, okay, she that wants makes... to go well yeah of course on she some does. of these <laughs> she, sees all the, she sees you planning all that stuff and you're right. like i want to do this the cool thing is is like the tchotchkes and the fun stuff and the crafts that we have that are left over that don't get used she gets, she gets all that stuff. Yeah. So, yeah so we do that stuff too that's amazing no there's all there, but you're right we've had that thought or that that thought and that conversation about it okay and i talked to her about it we're pretty we're pretty on the up and up bluntly honest with each other that's good. Yeah. I could tell that when she sat down. So Yeah. <laughs> she doesn't pull she doesn't pull any punches. Right. Yeah. So real quick, one other thing we talk about and you can talk about it or not, we talk about mental health and faith. Sure. Mental health is a big part of my life. I'm currently in therapy. It's been super helpful. Uh Ben has been in therapy too. And uh it's just one thing that we peer pressure people into doing. <laughs> now when I sorry, I didn't mean to say spit take there. <laughs> That's kind of our like our mo is we we peer pressure. You about got coffee all over you there. Yeah, I Sorry. know. I was like, oh, there goes a the microphone. Um, not not seriously, but right. we're like, hey, I can say it's super helpful for me, yeah. and I've I've grown so much in the last five years. You know, you need to do it. You know, so is that something that um, 
you just seem so happy. And, <laughs> and, and, and again, you, th- that doesn't mean that you're not right. depressed or right. anything like that. I get it. But, I get it. Yeah. Um, you know, during your divorce, did you ever see Absolutely. Any, did you? Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. When I was going through this custody battle, I was spending some quality time on a couch. Yeah. Or, or a big comfy chair. Or whatever. Whatever it is. Yeah. yeah. And absolutely I was. There are certain things that, that, that I didn't know what a panic attack was mm. until I had one. Interesting. I've heard the term. Yeah. So have I. Right? I don't know what it is really either. I mean, I've, I've, that's happened to me. And ever since that's happened to me, certain things, it's like breaking the seal, you know? Yeah. Uh, now you got to pee all the time. There, it's like once that's happened to you, certain things will trigger and I'll feel the, I know what's coming. And it was such a, one of the most ridiculous. My wife thought she lost me. You know, Janet was, I was almost you know, a bit catatonic. I wasn't coming out of where I was. And, and I still remember the physical feeling of what happened to my body. Mm hmm. Um, and that was just part of the custody battle then something that happened that affected me greatly. Yeah. So yeah, I spent a lot of time talking to a therapist and I completely condone therapy. Do I go regularly? No. Yeah. And I, you know, and should I probably, you know, a lot of us should, a lot of times I find myself talking circles with therapists because I'm pretty quick witted. Yeah, you are. And pretty fast on the three steps down thing yeah but i'm glad that you said that that i'm happy because a lot of people do find me a a positive person but i would say that that is something that just is taking something negative and turning it into something positive that's a great attitude i don't think i don't think my positivity comes from a positive place (laughs) i think my positivity you're working through a process they come from bad things that i'm going through I I'm not gonna let that affect how I treat other people. But see, that's amazing because that's what I struggle with. I right. let it affect me, and then I'm like, oh, I gotta go say I'm sorry because I <laughs> I was you know I I mouthed off. That's that's my problem is my mouth. I'm like right, right away reaction, you know, instead of like processing it. So I can tell you that this divorce has, has taught. I'm very good at conflict resolution now. No, I'm wow. pretty pretty good at it now. I'm you know. <laughs> Maybe I'm just beaten down to where I'm like, it's not worth it. Yeah. <laughs> let's just, let's get to the root of things and then yeah. just talk it out. <laughs> I don't, we could go through the whole crazy fight thing, but I, I'm not uh, too. Old I for did that, that <clears throat> and got the t shirt. It's not yeah. worth it anymore. It is, it is. But, you know, youth doesn't know that. So, right, right, right. I understand what you're saying about you're not going now because, like, I was going like every two weeks and my last time I went, I was like, um, I really don't have anything to like. I almost canceled, and she's like, "Okay, it'll be eighty five dollars." It's like, "Okay, I'll show up." Yeah, because I wasn't going to pay the cancel fee. But it's like, if you don't have anything to talk about, if things are going good, great. Right. I mean, but I also don't want to lose her as a therapist because she's amazing. <laughs> so I totally get there it. was part of it was financial. Okay, yeah. the divorces and custody battles are are expensive. Uh, I'll be paying for that for a while. You know, so I ended up firing it. my lawyer, and I did it myself. I went through three. I wish I had. Yeah, I was like, I can fill these forms out. I can file these motions. Right. I don't need somebody to stand right. up there and. But but I you know yeah part of it, <clears throat> part of it was financial and part of it was um, that what you're saying you yeah. almost you almost feel like why am I doing this again? Right, everything is great, but a lot of that can be. I know that there's probably a hormonal or um uh not bipolar no, no, but no. but a, but a type of but a type of I imbalance go, yeah right i know that there's probably a chemical imbalance that runs in my family yep um i'm sure that there are times when i'm in a funk that i'm just not going to get out of mm-hmm. and there's no reason for it and there are reasons when i'm overly optimistic then there's really no reason for it interesting and i think that's probably a bit of the you know the the bipolar, that but, is, but not extreme, right? You know, I'm not gonna, I'm not uh, it's manageable, suicidal, and I'm not um, <clears throat> euphoric, right? But yeah, it's a manageable type of thing. Um, but yeah, it, it is. I know that it exists. And the cool thing is, is that I've just been able to surround myself by from people who understand me. Yep. And again, don't let it affect how I treat other people. Yeah. You know, amazing. I meet a lot of people in my work. Yeah. And. Being able to be positive and present is something that I, you just kind of get trained to do. Yeah, and it's and it's it's a good life skill because it happens not just at work but in many places. Yeah, too many times people that are you know to bring it back to parenting spend time with their kids but aren't present. Yeah, I'm guilty of that too. You know, um, not saying you have to be in, into every little Minecraft thing he's doing or she's doing yeah. or whatever, but. 
to to actually engage. Yeah, you know, just be not say like, uh huh. Cool. People sometimes say screen time is a bad thing, but if you're both doing screen time together, right. it's a great thing. Yeah, I I often watch with Sullivan. I often watch YouTube kids YouTube with yeah, him because sure. then he's like explaining it to right. me and doing that, and he's spending time with that. Right, and after about ten minutes, I'm like, I can't I watch can't. this anymore. <laughs> So, <laughs> oh man, yeah. Real quick with Faith, uh, I assume you. I shouldn't assume. I Faith is in your life. It is okay. Yeah. Um, you're active church goer. Active this, yes. Okay. Eight a Bible. Eight a Bible. Yeah. Okay, nice. I've been very vacant from church in the summer. I not. <laughs> it's been a long time since I went there. So, um, how has that helped form daddy daughter? Obviously, I I you're not talking about it at the event, but. No. Um, not a faith-based organization. No. No. Now, when people ask me that, are you a faith-based organization? I say, I'm faith-based, but this organization is, right. no. And is it a single dad's thing? No. Is no. it a is it a gay, straight, um, stepdad, father figure? Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. Here, here's what it is. Open into all male figures who are affecting the life of a young daughter in which they are somewhat related to by marriage or blood. Right. Okay, it's pretty wide open, Yeah, right? But no, we, we don't open up the scriptures or hold a circle prayer <laughs> or anything like that before before these things. Have you, I pray about it. Right. I pray for the Lord's guidance in helping this organization grow and, and hopefully find the way, you know, his will. Yeah. But... That's as far as the, the the religion goes when it comes to daddy daughter time. Yeah, that's. I mean, I appreciate that you do that because you know I went to Christian school and and I see businesses out there sometimes, uh, you know, proclaiming that, and that's it's great for them, but I feel like it alienates a lot of people yeah. if you're like, oh, this is just uh, you know, if you're not a Christian or if you're, uh, uh, if you you know, this is what we're about, and that that's fine for some people, but you know, I I feel like. Um, I think that alienates a lot of people. So my, my bosses where I work are, are really, really, uh, really religious and pretty strict, but it doesn't show that in their business practices as far, you know, we have, um, uh, obviously they're, they're not, I can't say that they're, I, I can't say what they're pro, but as far as being gay, um, you know, we have a subcontractor that is, and, you know, they're always like, oh, yeah, you know, I had to pray for them. But there's still a, mm-hmm. a working relationship with them, and it's just yeah. – it's good to, to see I was, that. I was at Calvary for a while, okay. and, and my wife didn't really jive with their theology. Interesting. I did because I grew up Mennonite, okay? Oh, wow. Yeah, so I grew up in the young – it wasn't it wasn't your nice Jesus. It was you – it was come to, Jesus. Co- come to me or burn in hell. Ooh. It was – you had – you know, there was a lot of rapture talk. There was a lot of there was a lot of devil talk. There was a lot of if you take communion and you're not sin free, you're going to hell talk. Is you all know? Mennonite like that? I don't know, but it was where I grew up. I mean, when I say Mennonite, people think like it was Amish. We weren't no. we weren't churning butter. You no, know, no, no, no. It, it was it was just very. To tell you the truth, where I grew up, the Apostolic Christians, the ACs, yeah, those were the they were like the Amish. They were wearing the skirts down to the ankles okay. and the hair in the bun. Yeah, I mean Mennonite to them probably seemed heathen, but. <laughs> For most people, no, that was pretty strict. It was all hymns. It was no clapping in church. There was no rock band. Okay, there was a lady at an organ. There was the slide thing for the attendance and the offering. You know what I'm talking? I mean, it was. This is home, small That's town. It's like old school Christian reform. That's what pretty much what it was like. And uh, and my my parents went non denominational when I was probably like third or fourth grade, and that was like you know, going to a rock concert. Yeah, we were like rock wow, band that's church. Crazy. That's crazy. That's but a big switch. It is. How did they yeah. make that jump? Like Ben has a story too, where his parents became Baptist. He hasn't told us. I haven't quite figured it out. They're like Baptist, and then something like big jumps of religion. Not just like we went to a Christian reform and now we go to Undenam. You went from Mennonite to Undenam. That's like whoa. Yeah, I don't think there was an in between. It wasn't. There wasn't like a gateway non-denom thing. Well, that's a shock. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, sh- I was too young to even know. Yeah. I mean, I know that we were talking about. When they were at Salem Mennonite, yeah. which is it's still there, <laughs> a song a couple of years ago, it was locked. I was wishing it was open because oh, we were also the janitors. Just <laughs> we also cleaned it. Okay, so you know, going from there to yeah, I'm trying to think of there was a there was Eastview Eastview Christian Church in Bloomington Normal, which which was a pretty much non denom straight up Christian church. So yeah, I have no, I, I was too young to know hmm. or to to gather. How big of a sheer uh, gear shift? You I know, mean, it's that a big was, shift, but that's 
Huh. You know, it was very, it was very reserved. It was very reserved to a to a not very reserved. Yeah, but I think they, they were going to be they were going to be missionaries. They were going to do this, and then they just took a left turn and yeah. just worked in secular jobs and went to a non denominational church. And I don't know. Yeah, and but trust me, my father's past since then. But my mom is straight up. You know, there's nothing. Nothing happens in this world without Jesus. Yeah, nothing. Nothing. If she's watching this right now, hi, mom. I did tell you I was going to be on this thing, <laughs> and you know I'm right. Because that's, I mean, that's, you know, she she praises every, she gives the Lord credit for everything. Well, you should. Yeah, as you should. Right. Right. Great. So I just want to wrap up, uh, you know, after our, all our listeners heard this story in Daddy Dar, which is, um, I have to re-up, and I will. <laughs> you can hold me to it. It's only $99. I mean, it's not the money thing. It was just... <laughs> It's that's why the subscription base works. People are like, whatever, you know, and you forget about it, and and you know, whatever. But I uh, want them to come though. That's the funny part. Well, yeah, I mean, if they do. don't, that's great. Whatever. Yeah, you're not in is it to it, make is money. It, is it less? Exp- yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's a trust nonprofit. Me, trust me, we are not making money. We are bleeding it. Right. Right. So yeah, but I, but come on anyway. I mean, it's it's all come. We've landed on our feet every year, Jason. Yeah. We keep landing on our feet. Yeah. And I know that hopefully somebody will hear this, somebody will tell somebody, and somebody will write a check, and somebody will help support, and we'll keep doing it. Yeah. You know, it, it's good work. So what, what what would you inspire our listeners? Um, you know, where where should they go? What, oh. What should, you know, how could they get started with this? I didn't realize I got plug time. You get plug time? I get out. plug time? This is, yeah, this is not like there radio. Should, this should is be like what? <laughs> there should be like a bell. If anybody would love to learn more, either to support, volunteer your time, join, any of those things, I'll give you the number, all right? 616-591-3867. That's going to ring in my home. You're going to go to voicemail. I'll call you back. Right. (laughs) Okay? That is our number, 616-591-3867. You want to talk to me about Daddy Daughter Time? you have any questions about it? Anything. Yeah, because so many times you hear somebody say, "Well, how do we find out more?" And somebody says, "Well, go to the website." Yes, we have a website, of course. But I'll talk to you, okay? I'll answer any question that you have if you want to know anything else about this organization. I love talking about it. Obviously, obviously, I mean, I mean, I, I, we can keep going. You know, it's so funny. I am like a big voice, like you, and I'm always. I'm the one that talks. And so and I've blabbed your ear off right now. No, and it's great. It's just I feel bad like I'm like I'm not contributing much and that like when Zane was on too like I couldn't get a word in. You get us old radio guys on. We'll we'll never shut up. Yeah, I mean we'll you're never the best storytellers ever. <laughs> oh, what that. But yeah, ddtime.org there is a website. Yep. ddtime.org which will give you what we're about. You'll see photo galleries of every event we've had over the past 4 years. All waiting on you. So yeah, the photos are line. really nice. I know that I would go back in there, and they they do a good job with that. That's because I hire M Live X M Live photographers. Okay, uh, they know what they're doing, and they are excellent at capturing candid moments. Right, and I'm like the you are the people that I must have. Yeah, I mean, to do this. they know when to snap it. Yeah, they're really really good at it. And um, yeah, come out to an event. Yeah, what's the next people, event? I mean, uh, something I should let you know. A lot of people may wonder: Do you have to be a member? To come out to an our event. Oh, yeah, that's right. You do not have to be a member. Right. You can buy a ticket. Yeah. I mean, the ticket's going to cost you 20 bucks a pop. Yeah. So for you and your daughter's going to be 40. Yeah. But at that point, you're like, hmm, maybe 99 isn't so bad for a year's worth. Right. But you can, you, you don't have to buy a membership. And then you can, if, if they wanted to buy one on site, you would. Absolutely. You got right. something to yep. ring them up. You can, you can become a member. against $99 for one daughter and a dad, $149 for two, $199 for three. And okay. if you have four more daughters, bless your heart. You're still at one ninety nine. Yeah, please, you can bring. Please her. Please <laughs> come and let us help you. <laughs> and we do have a couple who have four. Wow, which is amazing. That is amazing. Yeah. Aaron's one. Aaron, you know what I'm talking. About. Aaron has four daughters. They all start with A. Oh, really? So there's like the A team. Right? Like, right. what are the ages though? Oh my goodness! Like, I mean, ballpark. You don't. You don't want to know. Probably, probably six to newborn. Oh, <sighs> yeah. They're oh. all young. I oh, mean, man. his diaper bill. Has got to be insane. He needs a subscription, uh, a PayPal link somewhere so yeah. somebody can donate to his diaper. That belt. therapist you were talking about, right? right. Yeah, he did. Oh. and he's a great dad. Yeah. He's, he's out at a lot of events. Takes them all at the same time. He is all in. Love that man. Good for him. Good, good for him. So. But yeah, you don't have to be a member. You can. Okay. You, you were asking me a question. I'm sorry. What yeah, that's all right. What's the next event? Oh, I just broke the mic. Uh, is, it, is it a clamp? It is. Okay. Okay. Good. You can just hold it. We're almost wrapping up too. That's okay. 
It's not gonna work. Okay. I'm just gonna hold it. This whole, you take it out. I feel like I feel like a rock star. <laughs> Like Aerosmith, right? Now. I got somebody on my other other podcast. His name, well, Jesper. Yeah, he constantly messes with this thing. I'm like, before we start the podcast, I'm like, I tighten it as tight as I can. I'm like, He's moving don't it. don't touch mess it. it. Yeah. It's just like a fidgety thing. Yeah, this isn't radio quality. This is like <laughs> this is good. Though. I mean, yeah, this is really good. Well, you have a it. you have a beautiful studio. <laughs> Next event, Daddy Daughter Time Derby. Yes, it's a hit because it's horses. Okay. Okay. This is the event where we go horseback riding. We learn about vaulting, which is basically gymnastics on a horse, which is nuts. Okay. And uh, and it's a great place, Karen's Horse Connection. Okay. Uh, that's where we're going to be heading. And then, see, now you put me... Are we have been on camera the whole time? The whole time. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, well, we're live streaming. I forgot. Yeah, oh, yeah I, I, forgot. Just, you know, I don't show that. That's why you don't do that because people are always... Yeah, they're looking to see like, what they oh, look oh, like. <laughs> so... <laughs> After that, we got the Dad Tona 500, okay. which we're doing uh, this year at AJ's Family Fun Center. We're going to have the place to ourselves. We're doing time trials. We're, oh, it's going to be fun. Sounds dads fun. get to race, and then the girls and dads get to, we get to park to ourselves for a couple hours. All right, cool. Yeah, and then there's more. There's a hayride coming up. There's a brush bash. We're going to be some painting together, and then there's always our snowball in December. And we just came off of j- yesterday was our philanthropic event. I didn't even tell you about that. Oh. Each year, we always do an event that gives back. So we went to Lavender Life Farm. Oh yeah, I saw Cal- that. Caledonia, online. great owners of this farm that donate these warmable lavender stuffed bunnies that they grow the lavender on that farm. Okay, uh, to kids going through the foster care, foster oh, care system. It all. So those the, the trauma, the transition, all that kind of stuff. Sometimes these younger kids, yeah, this warmable lavender smelling bunny really can help them. They That's get, amazing. They get a good body. Yeah, so we cut some lavender and we stuffed over six hundred bunnies for these. We were we had a little sweatshop going. Wow, it was awesome. Enjoyed some s'mores and had a really good time with uh, Lavender Life. That day. Amazing. Yeah, so, so, so we like to show daughters giving back is important, too. Paying yeah. forward and altruism. Well, yeah. That's part of part of what we believe. Okay. Well, thanks for coming on. I will make sure I uh, po- post all your social links and everything <laughs> on, you, on the page. So I pre- good job with that, by the way. I mean, uh, yeah, you got to go with it. Yeah. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Have a good night.